Hey man, wanna be friends? Anyone sick of push mowers yet? Greetings folks! Welcome back to the Tractor Fella Show, where we know nothing about tractors. What is that? Is that the choo-choo? Oh, that's, there's the choo-choo, but that's somebody driving by at the speed of snail for once. Anyway, on this episode, we're going to take this poor neglected machine left on the side of the road, kind of like it's the buddy here, and we're going to see if it'll run. Apparently I made a little list here. It needs oil check for gas in the sump, straighten the wheels, check the blade, clean air filter, and give it a bath. Yep, we'll do that. We'll do all the obvious. We may do a carb check on this one if it's in fact spilling gas into the sump, but we'll find out. Side note, Andrew, buddy, I will get a riding mower in this garage. I have one. Tried to move it today, has multiple flat tires, and I don't have time right now with all the freaking house projects that I'm supposed to be doing. So, hang in there, don't give up on me, and we're off. Also, another side note, sorry folks, no more 4K for now. It takes forever to process on my PC, and it also takes an additional eternity to get it uploaded into YouTube. I just don't have the time for that. There's no time like tornado watch time to work on your junk. Ooh. Interesting weather on this lovely April day. All I gotta say is these showers better bring some flowers. I made the mistake of opening the garage and now it's a massive humidity party in here. Take off my love note. Oh boy. Definitely interesting outside. All right, let's do some pre-checks. New shirt, check. Air filter, check. Could be worse. Nice little pre-cleaner here. I think we can just safely clean that off and take care of the issues there. Ugh. These little cotton ball nests are creepy. Very creepy. Gas. Clean, uh, well, sort of clean. Is that a cockle burr? Need to get that cockle out of there. Smell check. Smells like regular gas. That's encouraging. Oil. Apparently I never tightened this back down. Big question is, do you check the oil by removing the dipstick and then just touching it to the top of the crate case? Or are you supposed to thread it back in all the way? I don't really know. Either way, there is not a dang thing in there. Check. Uh, uncheck. No oil. Note. 10W30. Check. Oh look, there's the instructions right there. There it is. Touch it to the top. Don't thread it back in. Check. Crazy weather. Check. And what do we have here? Push to run, pull to start. Choke lever. Does it function? It functions. Check. Safety lever. A Little bit tight. However, it does work. Although, maybe it's this massive spring. Holy cow. All my good pliers are inside for construction. Spring. Oh, that's a heck of a spring. The cable looks fine. I'm pretty sure it's this massive spring on here. Holy cow. Yeah. All right. Cable's good. I believe this fancy heat shield is covering up our spark plug wire. Spark plug wire pliers. Who knew they existed? Not sure if that was thunder or if that was a trailer. Hitting all the massive potholes on our road. Well, this isn't very convenient, is it? How do you replace your spark plug when you've got a steel elbow on here protecting it and everything else in the way? Who made you? Yard machines? Yard machines, I do not approve. Well, I guess we're taking the top off. No, we don't want to take the top off. This is silly. I have no choice. I have to take the top off to check the spark plug. And we're off. Good to check this anyway, in case we have evidence of Mises, which we do not. And this does not look very old. Maybe someone decided to upgrade? I don't know. Wow, that is fancy. It's quite the design. Look how far down the spark plug is compared to the valve train. I see one little nutshell right back here. Most important tool in the garage. Ah, acorn. Common locals. That was wedged in there. All right, well, let's pull out the plug, see how it looks. Got a full-on monsoon outside now. Man, that is soaked. Super soaked. It smells like straight up oil. Yeah, it's drenched in oil. Maybe the owner put it away with oil in the cylinder? Yeah, I'll grab the shop back for that really quick. to get rumbly out there. We're gonna go with the wrist snapper 5000 and see if we get anything coming out of that plug hole. Brake disengagement, check. Let's see what happens.
Feels like it has good compression right off the bat. Yeah. Let's give it a check for kicks. We know there's a lot of oil in there, so it may be very high. And for those of you, I'm sure you're all very familiar. However, if you have an engine with low compression, you throw some oil in the cylinder, helps the ring seal, and you may, may just get a giant bump in compression. Big numbers, PSI, little numbers, KPA times 100 for our metric friends. And go. <laughs> And final result, looking at about, what is that, 100? 100 PSI? Well, that's pretty darn good. Man, I wish I had not opened the garage door, because everything is just soap. Torch? Never in my life heard of torch. So it's summertime, right? And I had a 1995 Ford Bronco. Rest in pieces. And uh, some friends and I decided we were gonna go ahead and hit some trails. And there were quite a few trails around where I lived. So I've got this Bronco, severely underpowered 302, E40D transmission, supposedly the heavy duty Ford transmission. That's what I was told anyway. So we're out bombing around, having a good old time, and we all have our CB radios because we're super cool. And I'm up the hill and I'm getting stuck in sand. Two wheel drive, the wheels aren't even spinning. I'm like, guys, I'm just trying to go and I can't go anywhere. And they're like, well, take it easy. And I'm cruising along. I've got my foot down. Nothing's happening. We're just creeping along. And I'm getting irritated like, what in the world is going on? Had I had more knowledge at the time of vehicles, I would use my brain, put it in four-wheel drive low instead of too high. Since too high, I wasn't even spinning the tires. Long story short, I'm cruising along. I finally start gaining a little momentum. I'm like, all right, good. I'm getting out of here. And then I see this orange glow coming from under the truck. Uh... Not good. I get on the CB. I'm like, guys, I got a fire up here. And I hear them all down the hill. They're all yelling, get up there, help them out. So I, <laughs> I get out of the truck and I look underneath and sure enough, there's a, there's a fire coming from underneath the truck. I start running away like an idiot and then I stop and I'm like, I can't let it burn to the ground. So I turn back around. I run my dumb ass back there. I shut the truck off and that put the fire out pretty much right away. And what had happened is I got the trans so hot that it blew the oil seal out the front and uh, it had a cut aftermarket exhaust on it, of course, because, you know, hillbilly things. And it lit the fluid on fire when it hit the exhaust. <laughs> so, oh man. So I call my dad and mind you, it's probably close to 2 a.m. But he always told me, Aaron, if you ever need help, don't hesitate to call. So I call him up, I said, Dad, I need some ATF. Where are you? I'm at such and such location. <sighs> All right, I'll see you in about an hour. So that dude drove out there. At the time, he had a Chevy Avalanche. So he just, you know, he had the newest vehicle of us all, just bombs up the hill, brings me the ATF, and he's like, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> so I filled up the trans. Back to the full mark. At this time, it had cooled off, so things were probably working more efficiently. Sure enough, I just drove it out. No problems. Uh, memories of idiocy. Might as well be brand new. Who's ready for a spark check? You gonna turn out the lights? Don't get scared now. And we're off. Oh, yeah! Looks good to me. We know we have compression, we know we have sparks. See if it pops. Going with the Super Tech throat spray of the day. Hydrolock. Runs like a top. So we just throw gas in it and see if it goes like the other one? I don't know. This is getting kind of boring. <laughs> Today we're going with half 10W30, half 5W30, make it 7.5W30, that should be just fine. Good, good. That all went right where I wanted it to. There's one thing I've learned about my life, it's that I'm destined to spill oil and other fluids all over the place. Shame on me for thinking seven and a half thirty would flow nicely. Four hours later, that should be enough. Yep, we're good. Take my word for it. <laughs>
or maybe you shouldn't. Now the question is, do we disassemble said carburetor that potentially leaks gas into the crankcase? Or do we just let it roll and see if it runs? Now let's just put a little gas in, see what the heck happens. Do a quick check of underneath so I don't lose a toe. Looks good. Looks like I spilled oil. Joke. Oh man, I put the wrist snapper 5000 away. No, I didn't. You can all yell at me later. And go. smokes literally well too bad it's not mosquito season we'd have a fogger right here okay so for one thing can you see the cloud coming out of the garage no probably not oh man let's fire it up again i want to see if it clears up it's kind of coming back to me right now hold on i'll tell you the story in a second all right safety th uh safety let's take these off I don't feel like getting shot by projectiles today. I don't know, maybe tomorrow. Oh boy. All right, so it's coming back to me a little bit now. I remember when I picked this up, I checked the oil and I wasn't doing YouTube yet, so I didn't care about recording anything, but I believe the oil was way up high. And I thought to myself, okay, maybe it's full of gasoline and it's filled up the crankcase with gas and oil. So I drained the oil and now I put the oil back in at the proper level. However, it's possible that there's still a bunch of residual in there from when it was way overfilled. Let's just let her eat for a while and see if it clears up. If it does not, maybe we'll do a bore scope and see how the cylinder looks. This is kind of fun. I mean, you know, it, yeah, it's a push mower, but uh, we have a little bit of investigation to do, right? Right, guys? Right? Yeah? Oh, okay. building up again. Well, it looks like it's clearing up. The garage is just full on clam baked right now. Well, let's let her eat some more. All right, so what's the theory? I'm still thinking the carb overfilled the crankcase, crankcase flooded the cylinder, owner went to fire it up, started smoking like crazy, decided, no, nope, this is going by the road. I pick it up, drain all the oil, put in the correct amount of oil. The smoke that we saw was residual from when it was last way overfilled. I think we need to take the carb off. I think we need to make sure the float is actually shutting off fuel like it should. It's not like this oil is super expensive or it's got a massive sump, but if I give this to somebody or sell it to somebody for cheap, that would not be cool if the issue reoccurred. <sighs> I guess we're digging in. Could you define this as being put away wet? <laughs> well, with any luck, those will be the same size as the top cover. And we're off. Woo! Got a long in there. Get our positive crankcase ventilation line off the back of this thing. Interesting note, crankcase vapors come in here and they go on this cute little channel all the way down to the intake to be recirculated and burned in the combustion chamber. Emissions 101 divided by 2.6 repeating. That little guy can stay there. That little guy, stay there, stay. Starting to get the shakes. Must be getting late in the day. Let's look at the linkages for my own sake. We all know I can't remember anything past 10 seconds. That one goes there. There are no other options. That is the choke. 
This cute little spring goes right here. Boop! A little bit of light on this situation. Hair spring goes up here. Throttle linkage. Oh, look at that. I figured it out on my own. How about this one? Does this require a twist and a tickle? Oh, I see. We have one of those 90 degree twisty options. Pretty annoying. Oh, sounds like someone just laid an egg and they're telling us all about it. Let's go ahead and pinch it off. Get off of there. Thank you. Do a little twist. Hopefully not break our fitting. There we go. Popped it loose. Let's see if our pinch off worked. It did. It did not. Come on. Don't worry, I won't make you watch the clip again about how I'm destined to spill everything in my life. That's quite the gasket. Check that out. It's not your typical paper thin one. No, that's is that coming with it? I think it's coming with it. I think we're just gonna do a bendy and a twisty. That'll never properly choke again. Do I really have to take that whole? No, I don't. Okay, there we go. You can stay behind. Thank you. And we're free. Hopefully, that looks like graphite almost. Hopefully that'll seal again. Probably not. Last paper towel of the roll. Dirty and hot. Got some numbers here. Who are we made by? That could be a problem, but we're gonna go ahead and put it right back together. I'm gonna go ahead and brush this off really quick. And what do you know? Now the sun's coming back out. We have a drain on the bottom. I'd like to drain the gas out. I don't know what's in what was in here last. Oh, it's clean. Perfect. I am very pleased with the commonality of nut sizes on this machine. Way to go, Yard Machines, Craftsman, MTD. Oh, yeah, that good. Good. I didn't want to... Uh, yeah, that, that's what I was going for. Oh my gosh. I will never not spill. Oh, it's still, it's still coming out. Anybody surprised? Nope. All right. Oh, there we go. Um... Rui, Rui Xing, Rui Xing, Rui Xing, Rui X Ing, Rui King, one twenty-seven. Interesting how you're not even allowed to adjust. Um, this looks like throttle stop. They put preventative measures on everything. Looks like underneath that may be a jet of sorts. I don't know. All I want to do, honestly, is check and see if this is sealing or not. Oh, nice, another common size. Love it. That didn't hurt. It's okay. I'm fine. Don't you worry about me. There is some yuck yuck in there. You know what? It's a good thing that we're giving this an inspection, especially if there's a bunch of trash in the bottom. And... Oh, dude! What happened? What? Are those rocks? I wonder if somebody was doing fun tricks and putting sand in the intake, but how would that get down to the fuel system? How would this... Well, this is interesting. <laughs> For once, you guys, I have a mower. That's interesting. Sorry, I just got to take this in for a while. It is. It looks like sand. Like straight up sand. No, it's flaking. It's disintegrating like it's not sand. I don't know. These look like rocks. Oh. <laughs> oh. Good lord, lady. Keep it down. Oh no, that's like rust chunks. Oh, forget it. I don't know what it is, but it's not supposed to be there. I can tell you that. No, I'm glad we took this apart. I can't believe it ran as well as it did. I, <laughs> seriously, can you believe it ran as well as it did? Oh, dude, everything should be clogged in here. Now I have no doubts that this is not sealing. Oh, this is, this is exciting. Welcome back, folks. It's a new day. Probably should have left this sitting in something, because now it's corroded. Not smart. Not smart, I am. I'm still trying to understand where these chunks came from. My goodness. For those of you that have seen ethanol deposits, is that what this stuff is? Because I honestly don't know. wonder if we can get that jet out of there. Let's give it a shot. Actually, you know what? Give it a blast first. Oh, 
Oh, she's almost gone. Oh, yeah. Find the notch. Find the notch. Oh, found it. Think it's going to click? No, didn't click at all. Very anticlimactic. And... Unless it's not supposed to come out of there. And that's a whole dude different story. Ah, oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Emulsion tube. Out. Jet. Out. Which one went in first and how did it go? No idea. I'll have to review the video footage for that. No, I know this. This end goes in first. This end trails. And then... This end caps it all off. Are we clear? Oh. We're clear. Are we clear here? Yep. We are. However, my buddies bought me these, so now I have an excuse to try them. Oh, look at all of that. All right, well, let's start small. Oh, man. These are fantastic. Oh, look at that. We're through and through. I don't need to do any of this whatsoever but I need an excuse to use them. Plus these have like a small filing action on the sides. You can kind of see, it's like a file. How cool. Well, that's clean, that is clean, that's clean. We can see right through to the middle of the hydrocarbon distribution center. Let's check the needle and seat. This is where I had concerns because, oh, wait, look, look, look. You remember how we had a hypothesis as to why the crankcase may have been flooding with gas? Well, I present to you the corroded needle. Well, I've had quite a few nice folks out there tell me to stop putting the needles in an ultrasonic cleaner because that black coating is apparently from the factory. And we do not want to get rid of the black coating. The spring just fell off and landed in my hand. I really need to be more careful with these things. Nice and gentle. Look at that coke thumbnail. My goodness. I need to change my habits in life. Oh, look how nice that is. Look how horrible my fingernails are. Can you tell I've been painting the inside of my house? Does anyone out there actually like painting? Now, let's give the shut-off seat a little blast of blast. Let's force it in there. Give it a little twisty twisty. Do you even make it to the bottom? Barely. Round two. Fight. All right, let's break clean it out of there. Looks pretty good down there. And I think we're going to call it pretty much close to a day. However, we need some water displacement action because I am very limited on time right now. Because I'm supposed to be painting. Where's my WD-40? There it is. All right, hopefully this will displace some water for us. I remember I had an engine machining class and WD-40 was what you coated your stuff in at the end of the day to prevent it from rusting the next day. Because with my luck, I'll come out and it'll all be coated in corrosion. All right. Now I have to go in and explain why I smell like chemicals. Welcome back. It is a new day. So the plan is that I don't have a plan whatsoever. I think what I'm going to do is just start poking every orifice I can find. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, clean out the grime. Is that hole completely blocked or is that an orifice? Looks like an orifice. Oh, yeah, it was just uh, coated in a rusty <laughs> bubble. <laughs> Clean this out a bit. Yeah, that's just got to be rust. I don't even know what's rusting. Is this the, is the bowl itself rusting? I do not know at all. I wonder if there was some metallic material that infiltrated the system and then rusted once it was in the, the fuel as I destroy all the bristles. Find another partially used towel. Oh, how nice. Almost to perfection. Anybody get the shivers when you hear metal scratching metal? What gives me the shivers is people using their fingernails to scratch ice off of windows. Ugh. Kids used to do that on the school bus just to watch me shudder. <laughs> and I kid you not. Ugh. Let's use the one piece of sandpaper that I use for every purpose. 
good enough anyway. New roll. Nice fresh paper towel. Never in my life have I used carbon choke cleaner. So thank you friends for the opportunity to try it out. Let's go ahead and blast some orifices. Oh, oh wow, pressure, hello. That is clear, jeez. Contents under pressure, hello. I'm sure this is clear. Jeez. Yeah, everything's coming out of somewhere, so that's a bonus. I think that's about all the holes I can poke. It smells nice. Yeah, we'll give that a light brushing. Oh. Well, I'm thinking we put it back together and throw it on there and see what happens. I still can't believe it ran as well as it did. That was impressive. A H. Let's see, I believe this went like so. This, if I don't launch the spring across the room, goes on here like so. Well, that's gonna be sketchy because I don't need to start losing little miniature springs. So, let's see, oh yeah. Get that little guy in there. Get this little guy in here. We're back, we're seated. Ooh, spring-loaded action. Do a quick check here. Nope, sealed off. Cannot move any air. Turn it upside down and go. Back the other way again. <coughs> oh, jeez. Gross. Let's put our hydrocarbon vaporizer back in there. All right, this little guy. Whoop. And then this little guy. Put him in there. Gently seat it. Bowl. Uh, I don't remember which orientation the bowl goes. Too lazy to walk and get my quarter inch ratchet, so we'll use the adapter. That should be it. Ready for reassembly. Whoop, whoop. And we're back for another day. Tis the day before Easter. My wife picked me up some shoes. Said I need to stop wearing Crocs around dangerous machinery. Steel toe, slip resistant, electrical resistant. She also vetoed me changing the channel name. So we are stuck with Tractor Fella. And it's okay, I had other people tell me I shouldn't change it as well because it's already been established. Found this in the yard the other day. I find quite a few treasures. Our house was built at the turn of the century. What do we have here? An adjustable linkage? What do you think it went to? Little tractor? Maybe you could make a note in the comment area. Just, I mean, if you want, only if you want to. <laughs> All right, let's get this carb, throw it back on the machine, and see what happens. Well, here we go. Let's get our little choke lever back on here that I mutilated. Why didn't I just take it off like that in the first place? I don't know why I ask myself questions. Throttle linkage. There we go. Oh, yeah. Get our little hair spring. Oh, where, what happened? What happened is you pulled on the part of the spring that doesn't expand, you meatball. Bend it back. It's like my first day today. That's back there. This little guy is going up here. Looking good. Hopefully this decides it wants to seal up again. Oh, look. I got it oriented nicely so we can just loosen it up and drain the gas out. I think that'll work. Giant, dirty ga gasket. Is that in the right spot? Or does it go the other way? No, it went on here like that. I think we're doing this. Yep, there we go. Put our gas line back on. Release our clamp that has now permanently deformed our rubber hose there. There we go. Should be filling up the bowl. Hopefully not the crankcase. All right, crankcase vent back on there. This one I can use with my fingers. Very exciting. I can guarantee there is a torque spec for these. And that torque spec is called five Ugga Duggas. Perfection. Like a full-on automotive air filter. But I can't get it back in there because this is also my first day. They weren't joking around about air filtration, were they? Let's see if we can tuck it in there first. And then close the lid. Probably not. It'll just fold over the back side of this filter like it's trying to do. Perhaps, just perhaps, we can put it on here and then clip it on the back side. Think we can get it? Oh, success. Okay, think it'll go? So I made mention that I'd been doing some house projects on the inside. Is there anyone out there that actually enjoys painting? This is what I think about painting. Yeah! <laughs>
So I did a quick oil check. We are just on the hash, on the dipstick. Whoop, lubricate the floor again. So what I'm gonna do, fire it up, see if it runs okay. If it does, then we're gonna let it sit all night and we're gonna see if that oil level goes up from the carburetor, allowing fuel into the crankcase. Choke, check, lever, check, engine. Fail. Oh, I never bent the freaking choke lever back. Ugh. Lever bent back. Now we're actually getting choke action. Try again. Round two. Chokey. And go. I'd say that's a success. When it's not Easter weekend, I'll fire it up and let it run for a while. Make sure it doesn't start billowing smoke again. Okay, Andrew, this one's for you, buddy. Just pumped up the tires, and now it's time to push. Welcome back, folks. It is a new day. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program to bring you the claustrophobic moment of the day. I'm going up into the attic, and I can't wait. I just, I just can't tell you how much I love going into attics. First, mini backpack. Pencil. Second pencil for when you drop your first pencil into the insulation and can't find it again. Paint pen. Wasp spray. Extra flashlight. Notebook. Gloves. Full-on bodysuit. N95 masks. Because I don't feel like ingesting a bunch of insulation today. Who's ready for a fun time? Entrance number one. 11 inches by 24 inches. Thankfully my ass is not as big as it used to be. There we go. Oh, good. This is why I brought the wasp spray. See all those little marks up there? Those are old dirt dauber nests everywhere. I can't tell you how excited I am to go up here. Da -da. Da -da 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 -da. All right. See all the floating particles? Isn't that nice? That's fiberglass dust. That's why I'm wearing a mask. All right, I'm gonna crawl for a ways and then I'll bring you back. Oh, jeez. Captain's log. Start eight. 93.6.1. Dash two. I'm finding myself in the abyss of pink death. Oh, crawling my happy butt through the insulation. Next up, the mini door of terror. Okay. Does that hole look large to you? To me, it looks like claustrophobia 101. Just for reference, there's my hand next to the hole. And I get to go climb through it to get into there. Oh, somebody save me. Because I don't want to record this, I'll show you footage from when I did this before, when I put all this insulation up here. Wish me luck. All right. Oh, I made it. I made it through. And here we are, into attic number two. Loving the turn of the century house. Just loving it. There's my marker. All right, folks, I survived. I'm gonna go about my business, and I will see you back in the garage. Now that this has been sitting for a couple days, welcome back, by the way. This is the same day that I'm climbing in the attic. Decided to give myself like a, you know, four second break. Wanna see if all the gas is leaked into the crankcase. Uh, do the dip and the pluck, and would you just look at that. We are in awesome shape. Well, why don't we fire this up, let it eat for a little bit, and see how she runs. As I drag this out, look at it, Andrew. Just look at it. What a beautiful day it is. We're looking at 65, sunny. It's the Monday after Easter, fantastic. All right, let's see what happens. My wife picked me up some shoes, said I need to stop wearing Crocs around dangerous machinery. Oh, it's so good. So good.
well that's a solid four minutes of running I mean okay fine 355 don't freak out and I gotta tell you this thing runs like a top spit and sputtered a little bit at the start and then we got some gas circulating and I'll tell you what it runs great as a fresh oil change all the cables work I don't know what else to say but what I will say is if you find yourself super bored and super desperate to watch something on YouTube well Swing on by. We'll have some more adventures. Catch you next time. Thanks, folks. P.S. Judge guilty. I will get a sticker for this. So nice and warm. Open the peeper every once in a while. Grab a piece of grass. Got Grandma River over here. She's struggling to keep her eyes open. Then you have the wildlings over here just bathing in dirt. Might as well be human children. Turns out UV rays kill bacteria. So their natural instincts are to lay down, throw out a wing once in a while, maybe pull the feathers out of your neighbor's butt. So sleepy. Chub Chub over here is just chewing on stuff with her eyes closed. Best day ever.